Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present a little bit uh, Optimum G activities. Uh, there are many engineers of Optimum G who are going on racing circuit, but you don't see them because we don't have an Optimum G shirt. Uh, we used to have uh, the shirt of the racing team or the shirt of the manufacturer. And so I would like to explain a little bit what we do at Optimum G. Um, this is a, an example of a car which is fully instrumented. And uh, the number one thing that we try to understand is the tire. And we do a lot of simulation and that car was used to validate simulation. So you have a car with slip angle sensor, wheel force to induce a wheel positioning sensor and so on. Uh, but everything about performance is happening in these four contact patches. And that's why we say from tire intelligent to uh, vehicle performance. So what are we going to speak? We're going to are going to speak about uh, seminar software and consulting on track. And I'm going to share this presentation with Bruno Finko, who is a brilliant engineer who is already working for Optimum G for several years, <laughs> has traveled the world uh, in the World Endurance Championship, ELMS, Formula Two, and so on. So. Um, uh, he will be uh, uh, speaking about a specific uh, job that he does with on track and especially KPI, key performance engineering. One thing I would like so, to add, Claude, is that if people want to skip to the timestamps of the specific um, activities we do, uh, they will be able to. Okay, good. Thank you. So we have three main activities we do seminar. We do software and we do consulting. So um, seminar, I'm very proud to tell you that we are approaching 400 people, close to 14,500 people in 34 countries since 1997. So Optimum G is nearly 25 years old. It's about an average of 18 seminar, something like that uh, a year. Um, In-house uh, for companies and also for um, uh, university courses and uh, some time for exclusively for a, a formula student. And we do software, uh, we do lab time, kinematic, uh, with the last version working on optimization of the kinematic. We do vehicle dynamic and we do uh, tire testing and modeling uh, with that. So then we do consulting. Um, with uh, car manufacturer, tire manufacturer, and race team. So um, let's say a, a few words about the Optimum G seminar. We have the Applied Vehicle Dynamics Seminar uh, that I've been teaching mostly, not alone, but most of them um, in many different countries and different companies and so on. Topics, uh, Vehicle Dynamic Fundamental, tire testing, modeling, and analysis, steady state and transient uh, state vehicle dynamic uh, behavior, uh, lateral longitudinal weight transfer in, in uh, steady state and in transient, aerodynamics, transient, uh, kinematic and compliance, simulation and simulation validation, and in lab and on track testing especially tire, KNC, wind tunnel, and so on. We will speak about that in a few minutes. Um, the data-driven performance engineering is more hands-on. Uh, people have to come with their laptop and we give them exercise. So uh, we basically uh, teach people how to use simulation and how to use uh, KPI, key performance indicators. So, we first workshop measurement, all things that you need to measure before you go on the racetrack, uh, bench testing and lab testing, modeling and simulation, data acquisition hardware, and then driver uh, evaluation through key performance indicator and also evaluation also of the car. But we, we start work, uh, with the driving, it's amazing with just the throttle, the steering, and the brake, what you can learn about the driver. And the goal is to compare them, uh, to measure them, to compare them, and improve them. Um, some data analyst technique, uh, 
uh, to save time because it could be a nightmare sometime. Tire management, big, big uh, importance. Uh, in many racing series, they are reducing the number of tires and managing them to have maximum performance and minimum of wear is a compromise. Um, and team organization. So just to give you uh, uh, an idea of what we do, um, for young engineer in a race team or a, a car company, uh, we put them up to speed very quickly. And sometimes for the people um, who have already experienced, we bring uh, new knowledge and we help the people uh, new techniques and we help the people to speak together. Um, racing, there's so many specialized people and it, it's very difficult um, uh, to uh, have them speaking together. So, and we have a content that we propose, but sometimes our role as a consultant is to tell the uh, company or the racing team what they need, not, not only what they want. Most of the time we are on the same wavelength, but we sometimes uh, propose different training. And so all our seminars that we do inside company or racing team are specific for each of them. Um, it's nearly embarrassing to tell you that, but at Optimum G we have 10,800 PowerPoint slides on damper, on everything but engine. Let's say this way, differential, brake, uh, chassis torsion, stiffness, tire, you name it, damping. These are examples of our uh, customer. Uh, only an example, they are not all there, but that's already a good uh, palmares, I would say. And then I want to give you an example of a seminar at Hyundai. That was crazy because these people wanted to have a seminar from uh, 8 to noon, lunch, 1 to 5, dinner, and six to eight. <laughs> and they were very, you know, shy at the beginning, but at the end of the seminar, they were very excited and asking very good questions, by the way. So we did teach vehicle that fundamental tire testing and modeling, kinematic and compliance, aerodynamics, uh, in lab and on track testing for vehicle and sub component, uh, like damper, like ENC, like uh, wind tunnel, like uh, tire, uh, vehicle benchmarking and comparing vehicle, uh, vehicle uh, modeling and simulation, and data analysis. analysis. I always say that um, we have um, uh, two numbers of the simulation and the data, and if the two numbers are not the same, at least one of them is wrong. Is it an algorithm in your simulation or your sensor which is not calibrated properly? So we try to uh, make sure that they coordinate the best possible way. So uh, that's another example at uh, Chris Chrysler. Well, at that time it was called Chrysler. Uh, four days, 100 participants. Uh, and they also less shy, but poor. a lot of fun questions. Very, I really enjoyed it. So we had people from vehicle dynamic, tire engineer, chassis control engineer, um, testing group, can say instrumented handling. Uh, virtual chassis uh, engineers and more and more uh, um, simulator, by the way, steering and suspension engineer and a few supervisors and manager. It was fun. Um, so, quick view about our software. Um, we have uh, uh, Optimum Kinematics and we have a new version which is not only calculated your camber variation, your roll center movement, and so on. Also a force model, but no, an optimization model. So until a few weeks ago, um, Optimum Kinematic was a very good software to analyze a given suspension, but it didn't tell you where to put your pickup point. We do that now. Um, and several uh, team and university are already using it. Optimum tire, and then vehicle dynamics, uh, which uh, mainly um, people ask us, how oh, does it compare with Adams and so on? That's not what we do. It's not comparable. It's based on six major performance indicator, which is grip, balance, control and stability on entry and control and stability at the exit, uh, at the middle of the corner or anywhere you want. And then the goal is to know what, which parameter influence uh, the most. So, Listen to your driver, 
Um, I have industry at the entry. I have a problem stability in the braking. And you will know first what you need to do on the car. So it's a toolbox that help you to make quick and smart decision uh, during the 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 race and uh, during the uh, training. And so these are some of our software uh, customer on the left, and then uh, we are operating in many different racing series also. Um, and we have a few customers that I have an NDA. I'm not supposed to speak about that, but there are two customers who fly pretty high. Uh, we have uh, Optimum Kinematics, um, very user-friendly. People tell us it's very easy to use, uh, fast and reliable, doesn't crash, interactive 3D visualization, and powerful uh, post-processing processing tools. And direct application of car design and setup. So it helps you to very, very quickly understand the camber variation, roll heave, steering, and pitch, or a combination of this movement. And then we have Optimum Dynamics, uh, create a fully defined simulation model in about one hour uh, when you are new to it, uh, design with ease and uh, speed with a modular vehicle model. And uh, you can create the initial vehicle model, then uh, with more data, build a more detailed model. So you can make it simple, then you can make more sophisticated if you want. And uh, is explore simulation such as the your moment uh, diagram and track replay. So you take the data of race car, you need the speed, the steering, and the free acceleration, and the car refine the slip angle, the camber, the ride die, the linear potentiometer. And I'm very proud to tell you that in terms of linear potentiometer, we are within 0.5 millimeter of what we have on the racetrack. So pretty good uh, validation of the simulation. Uh, and then optimum tire, uh, you import data from either track uh, with wheel force to inducers or strength gauge on all the suspend, uh, suspension element, or from a flat track like uh, Calspan or Sova Motion. You trim and you process the data, you fit the model, and you display the tire data in modern 3D. And then you have some custom graph or predefined template export model for vehicle dynamic simulation. Um, and you have connection with Excel or MATLAB. One of, um, you can use this tire model for two main reasons. One, for the race engineer, it's gonna give him a good idea already at the influence of the vertical load, the cam and the pressure. So it will help him in the setup and as an input for vehicle dynamic simulation. Model can be used with optimum dynamics, but it can be used with many other uh, uh, other software as an input. So, um, uh, in terms of uh, service, uh, we do tire testing. Uh, we have, I don't know, only we we have spent literally hundreds of days uh, on tire testing for about 30 different customer, sometime one day, sometime five days. Um, we organize, we execute, you model, and you re and you do a report, uh, and you do all performance, transient, stiffness characteristic, and within a few days, you have a complete report, and you receive optimum uh, tire for a few, for three months with it. Optimum tire, uh, the visual, uh, uh, which help you to visualize the model. Um, and maybe, uh, uh, Bruno, you want to say a few words about the tire modeling? Yes, yeah, so I wanted to add that besides running the tests, we do also a lot of research in terms of tires, so developing new analysis techniques, modeling techniques, thermal analysis, and so on. So just to give one example, um, we develop a few different th uh, tire thermal models because these thermal models can be in terms of, uh, so they are first fitted either from lab testing or from on-track data, and then they can be used either as a temperature estimation. So basically you're trying to 
predict what is your temperature, for example, around the lab for each of the different corners. Um, another application of tire thermal models would be the thermal response. Okay, so what is the exact temperature that we need to have in the tire to be generating ideal grip? So this would be a thermal response model. And lastly, if you want to combine your temperature prediction and your thermal response and use it in simulation, then we have the, uh, a version of the Pasejka or the magic formula model that is um, thermal sensitive. So this is how you can integrate all of these learnings also into your simulation. Uh, Bruno, can I put you on the stop for one minute? Yeah. Uh, uh, you can you go back to the previous slide? Yes. You are able. Please confirm that you test Friday afternoon. The car is very good. The drive is happy. You show up uh, Sunday morning and the truck temperature is eight degree uh, C less and it's colder. And you know that the balance is not going to be the same. You know roughly by how much and you know in which direction and by how much you need to change the setup to um, make the car working again properly. Am I correct? Exactly. So using our thermal response models and correlating track temperatures with the tire temperature, how much energy we can generate, we can estimate going the temperature going up or down, not only what is the grip shift, how much grip we're expecting to lose, but also what, what is the balance shift in what direction and, and as, uh, estimate of how much this change is going to be. Then using other tools and other knowledge that we have in terms of vehicle setup, we can predict this change and already estimate what changes we need to make, for example, to anti-roll bars or springs or aerodynamics to compensate for that and have the, the initial balance you had before that temperature shift. Yes. Okay, good. So there are some teams who follow the track and they are reactive and we try to, to do a uh, not reactive, but um, huh, gee, I'm still looking for my words. Uh, anticipate uh, the track uh, and uh, proactive. That's the word I was looking for. Okay, um, can you continue? Or? So the next um, service that we are able to provide is CG and inertia testing. So we are responsible for organizing all of the logistics of the testing, attending the test in the lab that we pick. And with that, we are able to get very accurate measurements for CG and inertia. And these parameters are very, very important when analyzing car performance. So if we want to do any accurate simulations, ideally we would have both CG and inertia. So this is what we get with this type of testing. Another service which is extremely important as well is the KNC, so kinematics and compliance testing. So in the same way, we are able to get real kinematics curves for the car, so not the theoretical one that is also useful, but here we are getting the real one with the real car. Besides that, we are able to estimate and um, measure system compliance. So, for example, how much camber variation you have, not due to suspension deflection, but instead because of lateral or longitudinal loads. Or if you have longitudinal forces, how much your toe is changing. So this is very um, useful, both at the track, to understand why your car behaves the way it does. It's also fundamental for understanding the vehicle suspension characteristics and for um, simulation. So this, these results are able to, to provide us with more realistic and accurate simulations. So the next type of testing that we do often is post-rig testing. So post-rig testing is one of the most important tests in our opinion because it allows us a very comprehensive vehicle characterization. So in terms of stiffness and damping and the coupling between stiffness and damping, ride quality, tire load variation for different road inputs, and also platform control, basically your ride height variation um, considering road inputs. And besides that, on, this, on the rig, we are able to run setup optimization 
when we are working specific, specifically with a racing team. So we can um, t pick and test a few different setups and optimize around that setup. One of the limitations from post-rig testing and that we, our solution is using simulation is that you have a limited amount of time. So you cannot um, test all of the possible combinations of setups. You cannot test all of the different possible um, routes you could follow to find the optimized setup. So the solution that we have for this is we test the car on the rig, we test as many setups as possible, but then the next step is to perform post-rig simulation. So we are gonna use the real data from the test to validate our simulation model. With that, with the validated model, now we are not constrained to just the setup parameters that were tested during the session. Now we can test whatever we would like. If we want to simulate a different combination of um, springs, <coughs> bump stops, bump stop gaps, <coughs> dampers, tire pressures, we are able to do that using simulation. And then the next step after performing this simulation is to use and interpret the data. And we do that by developing metrics that are relevant to the specific team or to the specific company that we're working with. So we are gonna use the simulation results and create metrics, for example, for load variation, for ride height control, for tire fatigue, if we're interested in reducing the number of tire failures that we have, tire temperature, and so on. So we are very strong at creating these metrics and then validating them against what we see at the track. And lastly, we can obviously also run optimization um, procedures um, or algorithms to optimize your stiffness and damping coupling, because we know it's not only about stiffness, ideal stiffness or ideal damping, is how they relate and how well you can match your stiffness package with your damping mm -hmm. package. You were able, if I remember well, to help some teams at the exit of one specific corner at the Paul Ricard, where the amplitude and the frequency of the uh, uh, curbs was uh, putting some stress uh, and a risk of failure for the tire and you suggested uh, some uh, setup change and the guys did appreciate because their tire was safer <clears throat> and at the same time they still gain a little bit of performance. Exactly. So, that's so, exactly. so we are able to, to provide information from a general uh, generic characterization which is pretty much valid for any track um, which is for example what we see in this chart um, how the damping level is um, influencing the tire fatigue index, index that we created, or the second table, which tells you if I want to decrease a given metric, let's say tire fatigue index by 1%, how much I should change in tire pressure or wheel rate or damping. And then it's on us to look at those results and decide, okay, it makes more sense to change the pressure or the damping for that, that specific case. So this is in terms of a generic characterization, but also we can do um, a track replay, which we're basically reproducing a specific section of the circuit and then optimizing the metrics for that specific section. All right, so the next um, lab testing that we would like to mention is wind tunnel testing which allows us to extract the aero maps from the car. So basically all of the front right height versus rear right height versus wing adjustment versus whatever flaps or other aerodynamic devices we have on the car. So we can understand how each of these parameters is influencing downforce, drag, and aero, or, and aero balance. So it is very important that we have this type of information in order to optimize the behavior of the car at the track and also um, make quick calls on how much we should change front right height, rear right height, wing angle, and so on, based on the driver feedback and based on what we are able to extract from the data. This is also very useful in terms of simulation. So we get more accurate simulation with that. 
Um, we are able to identify designer setup issues, so regions that you should not be running because of, uh, because of a specific reason. And also we are able to perform vehicle setup optimization using simulation and using uh, track experience. Next, we have vehicle modeling. So basically, until now, we were discussing how we can gather um, the information from the vehicle using lab testing. And now it's when we apply it. So we are able to create full vehicle models with what we uh, measured, uh, as was described in the previous tests. And then we are able to do that either in our own software, or sometimes we can do either in other software solutions. So in this example, for example, one of our clients wanted to work specifically with Adams because it's what they used in-house. We are able to use um, any software and input all of that information that we measured. Um, and what we do with this uh, information, it's going to be discussed in, in a little bit in this presentation. So another example of internal development that we do at Optimum G, we have our own transient um, full vehicle model. This is very useful for us because it allows us to customize this model for each of our projects. So if our client has a specific request uh, of some sort, a different component in the car, a different type of car, a different type of series, a different type of analysis, we are able to implement that. We have multiple developers working on this uh, model and they are able to implement this um, and then we can run this project. So with that, we would be able to run sense, setup sensitivity, track replace, reproducing what happened at the track, which is actually what you see on this chart which is correlating uh, vertical forces between simulation and real data. Um, ride and curb strikes analysis, optimizing the setup for that type of maneuver, post-rig simulations, thermal models, and so on. So it really depends on the specific project that we are working on. Yeah, I want to mention that uh, with the uh, post-rig simulation, you can save a lot of time ahead of going on um, on the post-rig. Don't get me wrong. Um, we make a living of simulation, but I will always still um, believe more what I measure than what I simulate. But you could save a lot of time and narrow the window of the setup very, very quickly. Uh, so that that's an important uh, thing yeah, absolutely. There. absolutely. And we are going to see how we close this loop um, in a little bit. All right. So next is, OK, now we measured everything from the car. We ran simulations. But how about getting not only the com from the component perspective measurement, but the whole vehicle measurement? So this is um, when we do vehicle instrumentation and testing. So Optimum G can offer acquisition and sensor selection installation and calibration of such a hardware, on-track testing for vehicle and tire characterization, for example, for benchmarking, for example, for setup optimization. Um, and for that, we count heavily on running ISO tests, not only ISO tests, but also track um, laps doing it on a racetrack, for example. Um, and besides that, we do all of the data processing and reporting of um, the results that we get from this type of testing. And yeah, that, I want to mention that, yes, if you don't mind, uh, Optimum G has its own loom, uh, which can accommodate 10 sensors and even 500. We have most of the sensor except the expensive one, like wheel force transducer, because we never know if we're going to test a car with 13 inch or 18 inches. Uh, rim, um, and, and the steering robot and the wheel, uh, um, uh, the uh, steering robot, uh, wheel positioning sensor. But we have very good uh, relationship with several uh, uh, of manufacturer of these tools, and um, we can rent them at favorite price, let's say this way, because they learn also from us. So, uh, yeah, I need to say that. Exactly, yes. All right, so having that said, now we can see how we close the loop and how Optimum G typically works, our methodology, which is first um, measuring vehicle parameters in the lab, 
on the left side of the slide. Then, with that, being able to feed our simulation and perform accurate simulation. And lastly, run vehicle testing and then validating back against the simulation. Because now we have the simulation, we have the real data, and we can go back to the simulation until we get very accurate measurements. So with this, we have simulation helping us define what we want to test at the track, but the track helping us fine tune our simulations. And with this, we can close this loop of the, our console, our typical consulting method methodology. Obviously, the specific methodology that we're going to use is going to de depend on the specific client needs and budget. But this is the general approach and reasoning that we like to use. Yeah, the, the, the goal is obviously to minimize the number of loops that you do there um, uh, to once you have a simulation which is validated, then you start to have confidence in your uh, software. Um, and the goal is to uh, do that in two or three loops instead of 10. Mm -hmm. And now speaking more, more specifically about on-track activities, um, so racing. This is what we are able to offer in terms of race performance engineering. So we're very strong at data and video analysis, um, driver coaching, key performance indicators, set, setup development, race tire and fuel strategy, tire pressure management, simulation and reporting, always with a very strong vehicle dynamics background. So we, we really know what is going on behind all of this. Um, and we also offer data and electronics engineering services, such as um, taking care of data systems, electrical systems, and wiring. So we develop a lot of tools um, to be used um, in our on-track support. And I want to highlight one of our strengths, which is working with KPIs. So KPIs for those uh, not familiar. See, if you don't but, mind, Bruno, yes. just want to say, uh, not only the team we are working with appreciate our professionalism, but on the human, um, many team have told us that our engineers are part of their family. Um, I am very lucky to work with hardworking pe people, but also with who are good communicators. Yes. Go on, Bruno. Yes. Um, so speaking of one of the tools that we use at the track, um, so the key performance indicators for those not familiar with it are basically metrics. So we try to summarize our, we summarize a lot of different channels, a lot of data into a single number for each lap, for example. And then we are able to create these KPIs, these metrics, um, dozens or even hundreds, depending on the number of sensors that the car has. Um, in order to characterize drivers, vehicle balance, different systems such as suspension, damping, aerodynamics, brakes, tire management, reliability, um, and even the influence of air and track temperature on each of these KPIs. So we have been working with um, KPIs for many, many years, and every time we're not only creating more KPIs, but finding more interesting ways of looking at them and making them more robust. And this is what I wanted to speak about now. So one example of different ways and innovative ways, I could say that we are trying to look at KPIs. One example would be, for example, here. So here we are not only looking at the KPI versus the lap. Here we are correlating a specific KPI, in this specific case, vehicle balance, against track temperature. So we can create a trend line and see how much we should expect in terms of vehicle balance shift versus the track temperature. So this is one of the ways that we, we are able to um, explore the, this type of analysis. And then the second point that obviously, I mentioned is that we're always obviously trying Obviously the to... result will be different, sorry. Oh, obviously yeah. the result will be different from dif different cow, different tires, of course. Absolutely. And some time driver. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then this is one, uh, just one example, but we could, another one that changes a lot with um, the car is aero balance versus air temperature. So we are also able to estimate if you have a shift of a given of, let's say, five degrees in terms of air temperature, 
how much error balance shift you are expecting because of that change. We know that that happens at the track and now we quantify it. And then for the next session, if it is five degrees higher or lower, we are able to calculate how much we need to change, for example, on the right height to get back to the initial error balance that we had. So we are always trying to predict what is going to happen on the next session, as Claude mentioned, instead of just reacting to it. Um, and then the second point that I mentioned is that we work heavily on making the KPIs more robust. So we are always evolving how we compute these KPIs. So for example, here we have a, an example of lateral load transfer distribution which is basic, similar to row stiffness distribution for two different cars, for different sessions. And then we have downforce distribution for one car, but at two different speeds. We can see that the, the KPIs are rather um, constant. They are not all over the place. They are not very scattered. And if anyone ever tried to calculate this, the first time you try it, it's going to be all over the place. You need to keep evolving your KPI until you get a more robust and, and consistent measurement, um, depending on the, on the equations that you are using. So we work heavily on it to make the KPIs more and more robust. So to do all of these um, nice plots that you are seeing, we have our own KPI software. software. So with that, um, we can, for all of our clients, we are able to quickly generate these KPI reports. So we are able to generate in just a couple of minutes a PDF report with, I don't know, 40 pages, 100 KPIs, um, whatever the number of KPIs we want to work with for that specific car. So it is very useful to, after the session, you have this report ready to be reviewed, understand what happened in the previous session and decide what you are doing before before the next session. This is why it's so important that we are efficient in making this type of analysis. And this is why we have our own software to do that for us. Um, and this software, it allows us to plot the data in the ways that I already showed you in the two previous slides, scatter plots, um, run charts, and so on, but also many different ways, uh, many different analysis. I'm not gonna go into the details now, but we are able to look at the um, most optimized way of understanding a specific behavior so that we can draw conclusions quickly after a session. And this is all, all these different plots are included in the reports that we are able to generate. Um, and then this was a little bit about our specific work with KPIs, but as I said, this is just one of the examples. We have a lot of other developments that we do for track activities and Besides our, our race performance um, engineering expertise, we also are very strong developers. So we have people that, is, that are not on the track, that are back in the office, developing tools for the guys at the track to be using. So we are able to, to develop tools that are for this that are used um, for specific or sorry that are used by specific clients. So for example, depending on the client needs and our needs at the track, we could be developing tools for setup analysis. We have done that multiple times. We are able to develop tools for strategy in many different ways. Um, so the first example that you see, the first image is a setup analysis in terms of aero balance versus speed. And then the second example is a strategy to calculate gaps for different strategies, taking into account a specific championship, specific roles, and so on. Besides that, wiring tools to help with that when we are designing wiring looms, um, also data processing tools, and so on. So as, as I said, we're able to develop whatever tools our clients need. So this was basically a summary of what we do at the track. Um, and what we develop to be always better, better in, in that aspect. So, Claude, do you want to add a few more words about our yeah, work just, and summarize what yes. we do? Just on the KPI, I just wanted to say that you can do analyze of a session, of a race weekend, or a complete year. Exactly. You can uh, make some filter. I want to know what the aero balance was when 
is all, always between 60 and 80 liter, and the temperature of the track was between 20 and 30, 35 degrees C, for example. Exactly. Uh, so we we're able to generate reports with multiple set, with multiple events and even multiple years and see how the team and the car and the driver progresses over the over the events and over the years mm -hmm. okay so um uh why choose optimum g uh, i think you need to give me control uh yes um we have a good reputation uh uh, for innovative solution and complex engineering problem. Uh, we offer credibility and visibility, uh, top tier engineering and race car community, direct experience with different automotive product, um, damper, tires, brakes, uh, wings, and their customer base, giving suppliers insider information and suggestion for enhanced performance. And we are a partner through their focus, attention, and flexibility. And I would add uh, one more thing. In the whole story of 25 years of OptimMG, we never have been uh, accused or even uh, suspected uh, to uh, share information from one customer to another. I'm very strict about that with myself and with the guys working with me. And I don't need to be strict because the guys have very good ethics. Um, so, uh, and all the data acquisition and vehicle uh, knowledge uh, can be used. So, uh, do you want to know more? Uh, if you want to know more, I suggest you contact uh, engineering at optimumg.com and uh, we will answer your question. Usually we answer within 24 to 48 hours. And um, if you are interested to work with us, uh, you can go to job at OptimumG. Um, there are job available. There are internship and employment possibilities if you are interested. And uh, what else can I say? Um, yeah, I would just like to add that we are yeah. always looking for bright talents all around the world. We have people from literally all, almost all continents and um, we are very passionate about what we do. So if you, th if you feel and you are confident that you could contribute to our um, work and to our success, uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. We are a very professional company, but we are still small size. So the human factor is very important. Uh, so there is no cubicle in our offices and the there is no whiteboard because we write on the walls. <laughs> so uh, that's a little bit how we are working. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, one uh, next slide. Uh, yeah, you where the best are choosing the best. Optimum G is not only a, a business, it, it's a passion. And that passion is, is uh, at the service of our customer with our skills. Um, we keep improving. We we like to be challenged. We 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 don't like to do subcontracting. We are consulting. We like difficult, not impossible. We have to be reasonable. We like difficult thing. We like to learn. We like to make uh, our customer uh, winning races and championship. And to know why. The why is the always the most important. And with uh, that, uh, Bruno, uh, yeah. you want to say one more word? No, that's all from my side, Claude. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much. Um, this was not advertising. If uh, We have video of uh, six minutes. Uh, that was, uh, uh, if it was, uh, that's why it took a long time. But with all the services we do and the, the level of, uh, performance that we offer, we couldn't explain that in just uh, a few minutes. Exactly. So uh, we thank everybody for following us and uh, we appreciate uh, your attention and uh, we are at you uh, uh, available. We are, we are available if you have any question. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you everyone.